This Belgian man is currently serving a life sentence, but don't feel bad for him. He had done something so horrific that after his arrest, around a third of the Belgian population that had the same surname as him changed it to something else because they did not want to be associated with him in any way. This is the story of Marc Dutro, Belgium's most infamous criminal. On June 24, 1995, in the Belgian town of Grasse Halonia, eight-year-old friends Julie Lejeune and Melissa Russo went outside for a walk in their neighborhood. For some reason, the girls did not return to their homes and their parents got very worried. The parents waited for some time, hoping the girls would return, but they didn't and they had no choice but to contact the police and report them missing. Thousands of missing person posters were sent throughout Belgium, hoping someone had some information that could help the girls return home safely. Reports from eyewitnesses started rolling in, claiming to have seen Melissa at several different nightclubs across Belgium, but this information couldn't be verified and the parents were pretty much left empty handed. Two months later, on August 23rd, in the city of Ostend, 17-year-old Anne Marshall and 19-year-old Afia Lambrex, who were friends, left a club where they had just watched a hypnosis show by Rasti Rastelli. Rasti is a hypnotist that does performances in various avenues across Germany, Holland, and Belgium. Ostend is this beautiful city that has many promenades, beaches, parks, and other tourist attractions and the girls were spending their nights there as they were on holidays. The girls weren't actually staying in Ostend, they were staying in a lodging in a town called West End which is around 12 kilometers from Ostend and in order to get to and from these two locations they took a tram. After finishing the hypnosis show, they managed to catch the final tram, but unfortunately, it didn't go all the way to their destination in West End, but there was only around 3 kilometers left to travel, so they decided to just hitchhike the rest of the distance to their lodgings. Hitchhiking is when you ask strangers for free lifts, usually by sticking your thumb out as cars pass by. For some reason, the girls did not arrive at the lodging lodgings, just like how Julie and Melissa did not come back to their homes after they went walking out in their neighborhood. The girls were quickly reported missing, and although Julie and Melissa disappeared just two months before Anne and Afia disappeared, the police did not link the two cases with each other as the disappearances happened in two completely different areas in Belgium. Ostend is located in the northwest of the country, while Grass Hello is in the northeast and the two areas are more than 200 kilometers from each other so the police didn't really think the disappearances had anything to do with each other. On May 28th, 1996, nine months after Anne and Afia disappeared, 12-year-old Sabine Darden was cycling to school in the town of Kine. Sabine did not arrive at school, however, as she had disappeared somewhere along her route. Just like the other four girls, Sabine was quickly reported missing. Ten weeks later, on August 9th, 14-year-old Leticia Dele went swimming at her local swimming pool in the town of Bertri. When she was finished, Leticia walked home, but she never arrived. Just like the five other girls, Leticia was quickly reported missing. In the span of 11 months, six girls had disappeared, aged from 8 to 19. The police had received numerous tips from the public, but they just led to dead ends until the tip from one eyewitness would break the cases wide open. Not long after Leticia had disappeared, an eyewitness remembered seeing this suspicious white van around the area where Leticia had disappeared and decided to take note of the van's license plate number and reported it to the police. The police followed up on this lead and the van was traced back to a man named Mark Dutro. Mark was by no means unfamiliar to the Belgian police as he was the definition of a career criminal. Mark was an unemployed electrician that made a living from 
from a number of illegal activities, including trading stolen vehicles, selling stolen car parts, and drug dealing. And he had been arrested several times in the past for other petty offenses. Mark used the money he illegally made to buy an impressive portfolio of seven houses in different areas in Belgium. After receiving that tip from the eyewitness on August 13th, four days after Leticia had disappeared, the police arrested Mark, a man named Michelle Lelivre, and Mark's wife, Michelle Marson, both of whom were Mark's accomplices, as Mark didn't carry out all these crimes by himself, he had a gang that helped him do so. The police searched a few of the properties that Mark owned, but found nothing. Mark and his accomplices were then interrogated by the police, and while they initially said nothing, on August 15th, Mark made a shocking confession. Mark told the police he knew what happened to Sabine and Leticia, and that ultimately led the police to discovering what happened to the four other girls that disappeared. This is the story of what happened to the six girls that disappeared. When Julie and Melissa went walking outside in their neighborhood, either Mark or his accomplices, it's not clear who it specifically was, had kidnapped the girls and brought them to one of Mark's houses in the town of Marcenel, around 90 kilometers from Gras Halonia. Two months later, when Anne and Aphia hitchhiked the last few kilometers to reach their lodgings, Mark and Michelle Lelivre kidnapped the girls and and brought them to that same house in Marcenel. As for Sabine and Leticia, you might have guessed they were kidnapped by Mark and Michelle Lelivre as Sabine was cycling to school and Leticia was returning home from the swimming pool and just like the four other girls, they were brought to the house in Marcenel. Mark had built a dungeon in the basement of the Marcenel house and this is where he would imprison Julie and Melissa. When Anne and Aphia were brought to the house, they were chained to a bed as the other two girls were occupying the dungeon. Julie and Melissa were later removed from the dungeon and kept somewhere else and Sabine and Leticia were imprisoned there instead. Mark had frequently essayed all of the girls some were even frequently starved and Mark had filmed hundreds of CP videos of the abuse. In September 1995, either Mark or his accomplices drugged on an aphia, brought the girls to another one of Mark's houses in the town of Jume, around 6 kilometers from Marcenel, and under a shack next to this house, Mark and another one of his accomplices, Bernard Weinstein, wrapped them in plastic while they were already drugged and buried them alive. Around the time that Odd and Aphia were murdered, Mark and Bernard had kidnapped three people. A man named Philippe Divers and Philippe's friend Pierre Rochot and Pierre's girlfriend Benedict Jadot, all of whom were held captive in the house in Jume. The reason Mark and Bernard had kidnapped these three people was because Bernard and Philippe had stolen a van together, but the owner of that van had somehow found it and contacted the police, and the van was quickly returned to him or her. Mark and Bernard believed that the owner found the van because Philippe and Pierre had snitched on them. Mark and Bernard then kidnapped the three people and questioned them, believing they knew something about the van being found. After Mark and Bernard questioned the three people, they left the house, likely to kidnap and question someone else, but while they had left, Benedict somehow escaped from the house, told a neighbor about what just happened, and the neighbor contacted the police. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Since Bernard was now wanted by the police, Mark saw him as this big liability that was going to get him 
him and his gang arrested, so he came up with a plan. Mark kidnapped Bernard and brought him to the house in Marcinelle. Mark then temporarily took Julie and Melissa out of the dungeon, letting them walk freely around the house and kept Bernard inside the dungeon for one week from November 13th to November 20th in 1995. While Bernard was inside the dungeon, Mark drugged him and crushed his testicles by placing hose clamps around them to force Bernard to tell him where he had hidden the money that the gang had illegally made. Once Bernard told him where the money was, Mark brought him to a different house he owned in the village of sars le boussier around 20 kilometers away from Arsenal, and just like Anne and Aphia, Mark buried Bernard alive in the garden of that house. This plan did not work in Mark's favour however, as the police quickly caught up to him and he was arrested for vehicle theft on December 6, 1995. Since Mark was in prison, he had told Michelle Marson to feed Julie and Melissa who were trapped in the dungeon in the house in Marcinel. But for some reason, Michelle, who was also one of Mark's accomplices, was too scared to go into the dungeon and decided to not go down there. With Mark behind bars and Michelle refusing to go into the dungeon, the girls were left all alone and with no one to bring them any food or water, they just starved to death. After spending nearly four months in prison, Mark was released on March 20th, 1996. When Mark returned, that somewhere else where he brought Julie and Melissa to after taking them out of the dungeon was his house in sars la boussier where he buried their dead bodies next to where he buried Bernard. On May 28th, two months after being released from prison, Mark and Michelle Lelivre would kidnap Sabine and then 10 weeks after that, on August 9th, they would do the same to Leticia. But unlike the other four girls, Sabine and Leticia actually survived this whole ordeal. When Mark and his accomplices were arrested on August 13th, after that eyewitness had reported that suspicious white van, Mark was interrogated and two days later on August 15th, he told the police where Sabine and Leticia was and on that same day, he led the police down to the dungeon in the house in Marcinelle and the girls were rescued. Sabine had spent a total of 80 days in the dungeon while Leticia had spent six days down there. The bodies of Bernard and the four other girls were later recovered as well as the hundreds of CP videos that Mark produced when he was tormenting the girls in the dungeon. When news broke out about what happened to the six girls, it spread like wildfire throughout the country. The public were so furious about Belgium's weak justice system and how poorly the case was handled that around 300,000 people protested at the Palace of Justice in Brussels, the country's capital, on October 20th, 1996, which today is known as the White March. It turns out, this was not the first time Mark had carried out these serial kidnappings. Between October 1985 to January 19. 1986, around 10 years before he kidnapped the six girls, Mark, Michelle Marson, and a different accomplice, Jean Van Pentheim, kidnapped five girls between the ages of 11 and 19. It's not clear which house the girls were taken to, but it was probably the same house in Marcinelle. The girls weren't kept in the dungeon, however, as the dungeon wasn't built back then. Instead, Mark essayed them, and when he was done abusing them, he he just let them go. In February 1986, Mark and his accomplices were arrested, but it wouldn't be until April 1989 that all three were convicted and Mark, Jean and Michelle Marson received sentences of 13 and a half years, 6 and a half years and 5 and a half years respectively. Unfortunately, Mark got his sentence reduced for good behaviour and he was released on parole just three years later in April 1992. If Mark had been given a harsher sentence or at least served that initial 13 and a half years, the four girls that died would probably still be alive today. 
that was the first thing that the public was mad about. The other thing was how poorly the police handled the case. While Mark was in prison for vehicle theft, on December 13th, 1995, the police searched his house in Marcinel, and when they were searching the house, one of the officers heard the sound of girls screaming, but he couldn't find out where the screams were coming from. So he assumed they were coming from somewhere outside and just shrugged it off. Those screams were coming from the girls that were trapped in the dungeon. The police also found the CP tapes that Mark produced, but they didn't have the equipment required to watch these tapes, which is what someone has to do. Someone has to watch that stuff so he could get convicted, but since they didn't have the equipment, the tapes weren't watched and they were just forgotten about. Due to numerous delays and postponements, Mark and his accomplice's trial began began on March 1st, 2004, seven and a half years after he was released from prison for vehicle theft. Mark Michelle Marson, Michelle Lelivre, and another one of Mark's accomplices, Michelle Nihau, received sentences of life imprisonment, 30 years, 25 years, and 5 years respectively. Michelle Marson was released on parole in 2012, and in 2022, she became a free woman. Michelle Lelivre was released on parole in 2019. Michelle Nihau was released on parole in April 2005, but passed away in 2019 due to health issues. Mark applied for parole in 2013, but his appeal was rejected, and hopefully all his future appeals get rejected as well, so that he could spend the rest of his life behind bars. Around a third of the Belgian population that had the surname Dutro changed it to something else after Mark was arrested because they did not want to be associated with him in any way. As for Sabine and Laetitia, they testified against Mark in course during his trial and their testimonies helped him get convicted. Sabine has even written a book documenting her whole ordeal called I Choose to Live. There's not too much known about the girls today, but it is presumed that they are living normal lives. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, comment down below what you want to see next, and subscribe. Until then, see you next time.